Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. This is where we're going to today look at all the positive connotations of Bitcoin, the misinformation of people that are not Satoshi, the fears of money laundering, the verbal demagoguery of blaming it as an addiction, people losing money in the extreme amounts, if you must invest in crypto, here's how. The, the, the language is all over the place. Even when Bitcoin's doing well, oh, it's, it's, it's not even addressing what he did well. It's just addressing, oh, he lost six billion in a day before. Where's this next one? Crypto seller admits five offenses in clap, clamp down on illegal ATMs, but you can go and blow all your money in a betting shop and the bank won't say anything. Yeah. Oh, someone that did well with Bitcoin, but the whole article is just degrading her. <sighs> yeah. Crypto, crypto kings, billion dollar, multi-billion dollar fraud. There's, if you think that you're going to get any positive insight as to what Bitcoin is, I wouldn't read the news. Bitcoin mania. As I said, even if it's doing well, the wording is just all over the place. If you truly think you're going to learn anything about Bitcoin from a truly fundamentals perspective, the newspapers are just going to smoke and mirrors you through and through. And this is because, well, I've got endless amounts of this. It's sad because this is Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin. The production of energy, the transfer of it over time, the consumption of it, heat. Doesn't the UK need a lot of heat? It's a lot of heat, like over 50% of our needs in the UK for consuming energy is to produce heat. So you've got this computer monetization system which consumes energy, turns it into money. The output of that energy consumption produces heat which could go into your home. The compute power supports a storage space for information, the blockchain, and all these other different pieces that truly add value to society. But the UK wants none of it. And it's sad. It's really sad because there is a lot of young people with passionate interest in all the different energy, compute and financial sectors. But all three sectors are ossified and red taped, whilst in the US they're rolling out the red carpet. That the energy sector, the compute sector and financial sectors are just laying the path, building the regulatory and legal frameworks to allow this stuff to operate and express its freedom there. And the UK is dragging its heels. It's absurd. So I say to people such as Ed Miliband, if Bitcoin isn't at least even part of the discussions as to how the UK could prosper by consuming all of its wasted energy, by making wind farms switch off when they have too much power and paying them for it, that's like a business being full of inventory on the high street. And there's a customer at the door, miners, wanting to buy closing the doors and charging customers for it. How can a business not sell its inventory and charge customers for it as a national grid? That is absurd that renewables is a facetious fraud in a sense because we are paying wind farms to switch off and that, that cost gets extrapolated out and charged to customers in their energy bills whilst there is a buyer of energy that can consume the energy at any time and anywhere because you just need the electrical connection and the internet connection. Bitcoin is a circular system of energy and finance connected as a circuit. It's an economic energy ecosystem. So anything from the media is the dollarized price and doesn't look at any of the other parts of the iceberg, so to speak. So dear UK, Please just at least learn Bitcoin from a mathematics and physics perspective to understand that electricity now has a data derived money value. And what that does is create a pricing system, a natural buyer of energy. And when the price of that energy goes higher than what you can turn into this new form of money, well, you can now sell that power back to the grid. Bitcoin mining is not going to consume all energy because it's constrained by a pricing model. If more compute joins, the amount of Bitcoin per kilowatt hour will drop. And so that pricing of energy continually drops. And 
we are electrifying the world. Cheaper energy means you driving in your car, running your, your black cab in London, or any other forms of logistics, all of your costs are derived in energy. The food that we produce needs heat in the greenhouses, fertilizer produced from energy, and the transportation of those crops and the tractors and everything in between to move those commodities to the supermarket where they are consuming electricity to keep it cold and selling it. Everything of our life is based on energy prices. And what does Bitcoin do? It replaces the debt-based monetary system with energy prices. The more consumption in society, the energy price rises in Bitcoin. The less consumption in society, the energy price drops because there's more compute power and less fees. So that pricing system of the amount of Bitcoin per kilowatt is dynamic and is always observant of the collective's use of energy and money. I hope this was an interesting different sort of video, but all of these different layers have several different hours of conversation that could be delved into. But the approach here is that this, the UK needs to take a fresh approach and a fresh look at not just Bitcoin as money, but the blockchain, the compute power that produces the blocks, the hardware that produces the compute power to produce the blocks, and that local buyer of energy connected to global finance. The UK historically is a banking giant and the history of the UK going out into the world and taking risks. Why are we in a state that everything is so ossified and resistance, resistant to change? We, it's clear we are in the 21st century internet information age and the UK is dragging its heels. So I say this to any UK decision maker, I am more than happy to give my time and energy away to providing information and education where I can. If that's going to be of use, I'd like to help my country. Thank you for listening and goodbye.